Hi and welcome to a new video. Have you tried restarting your iPhone but it keeps getting stuck in an endless reboot? A recurring restart loop issue commonly occurs due to software-related glitches, often triggered by a corrupted iOS update, an unsuccessful attempt to modify the system called a jailbreak, or worse, a hardware malfunction caused by an external or internal damage to the device. In this video, I will discuss several methods you can try to resolve this issue and regain access to your iPhone. Let's go! Usually, if you are experiencing glitches or errors with your iPhone, the common solution is to perform a force restart. Keep in mind, though, that the specific combination of keys required to do this may vary depending on the model of iPhone you have. For iPhones with Face ID such as iPhone X, iPhone 11, or any newer model, do the following steps. The following procedure also applies for iPhone 8 and iPhone SE. Press and quickly release the volume up and volume down buttons respectively. Then, press and hold the side button. Once the Apple logo appears, release the side button and wait for your iPhone to restart. On the other hand, the process is slightly different on the iPhone 7. In this case, you need to press and hold both the volume down and side buttons simultaneously. Continue holding both buttons until the Apple logo appears on the screen. For those with an iPhone 6S or earlier, press and hold both the sleep and home buttons at the same time. Keep holding both buttons and release them when the Apple logo appears. If your iPhone does not work because of a corrupted iOS version, you can try using iTunes or Finder to restore your device to normal operation. If you're on a Windows computer, you can download iTunes from the Microsoft Store for free. Mac users can use the pre-installed Finder application. Make sure you use an original or an MFI certified cable to connect your iPhone to your computer. This is important to ensure that data can be transferred. Now, you can enter the recovery mode with the same key combination you used for the force restart. But this time, keep holding the keys until you see the recovery mode screen. To check if your iPhone is successfully connected, you should see this phone icon at the top of the iTunes toolbar. If you were on a Mac, you should see it under locations in your Finder. Now you have two options. First, you can simply update your device to resolve any glitches from your previous iOS upgrade. If the update fails, your second option is to restore your iPhone. Unfortunately, this will reset your device. Hopefully, you have a recent backup in iCloud or on your computer, so you can restore it after the reset. If you don't have one, you'll lose all the data stored on your device. Unfortunately, the process of resolving software problems on your iPhone using iTunes or Finder may not always work. Aside from that, restoring your iPhone leads to loss of data, particularly if you haven't backed it up. Because of these disadvantages, the best approach is to use a third-party repair tool instead. Personally, I use iMyPhoneFixPo. This software is specifically designed to fix common iOS issues with a few clicks. You'll find the download link in the description below. FixPo is compatible with both Mac and Windows PC, so make sure to choose the right OS before downloading the installation file. After installation, launch iMyPhone FixPo on your computer. Then, connect your iPhone using either an original or an MFI certified cable. To get started, choose the Apple System Repair feature in the dashboard. Compared to using iTunes or Finder, this feature has a higher success rate in resolving software-related issues. However, please note that this is a paid feature. Here, you can choose between two different modes. Use Standard Mode to fix most system problems such as frequent crashes, black screens, and more without losing any of your data. Then, follow the on-screen instructions to complete the process. Once the repair is done, your iPhone should restart normally, and you should be able to continue using it without further issues. If the repair fails the first time, try running the process again. Some users claim that it usually doesn't work on the first try. However, if the standard mode doesn't work even after running it several times, you can use the advanced mode instead. Note that unlike the first mode, this will delete your data. 
Hopefully, you have a recent backup on iCloud or on your computer so you can restore your data after the repair is complete. If nothing worked, your iPhone may have a hardware issue that can best be resolved by taking it to your local Apple retail store. And that's it. If I could help you, feel free to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions. See you next time. Bye.